D, wait for it. Light bulb. I got the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this story, and you can um, read those and come up with your own opinion, or just watch this video where I just break it all down for you, and then you just go about your way. Um, I also want to say before I get started that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine always get pushed to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So for the first story I have for you this week, besides, uh, you know, I had, I had uh, you know, covered the stories of Gal Gadot and Rachel Ziegler being cast as the Evil Queen and Snow White in the live action adaptation of Snow White for Disney. You can check those stories out in the iCard section right up there. But it was announced exclusively, we'll talk about that in a minute, that Greta Gerwig has joined as the writer for Snow White. Now, uh, you may not know Greta Gerwig, but she is an actress, but you may know her from Jackie, Arthur, or No Strings Attached. <clears throat> But this day, uh, these days, she's mostly known for her writing and directing. She wrote and directed Lady Bird. She also wrote and directed the newest adaptation of Little Women, <clears throat> which I personally liked. I did like Lady Bird also. I thought both those films were good. And then she is going to be writing and directing the upcoming Barbie movie starring, oh, shoot, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. Oh, gosh, Harley Quinn. What is her name? Oh, it doesn't even matter right now because that's not the point. She has been tapped to write Snow White for Disney. Now, this comes exclusively from the Dis, uh, the Dis Insider, and they have a pretty good track record as far as getting these scoops and everything. I don't really know that guy. Uh, what's his name? Sebastian or something like that. I don't really know him and everything. I, I, you know, I see his tweets and stuff. So that's where I got this story and I went and read the article and everything. <clears throat> Now, she, from what, what I had said that she has recently, she has read, wrote, written the recent draft of this movie. So they are prepared to start filming because rehearsals begin in January of 2022 next year. And that's like dancing and singing and all that stuff. They also are expected to start shooting in March of next year. So it's coming up pretty soon. So uh, that should be, you know, I think, uh, so as far as Greta Gerwig goes, <clears throat> uh, writing and directing this, I think that she, I think she's a competent writer and a competent uh, director. Uh, and I think that she, I think, listen, as far as the movie goes of her being, being tapped to write it, I think uh, that's solid. Um, She's, I think she's a talented writer and I think that she is definitely competent. So it'll be interesting to see what she does with it. Um, you know, I, like I said, maybe she can add a little bit more nuance to the story because if you remember the original story, it's just basically like girls born pretty, stepmom gets mad, wants to kill her, she runs away or she gets away ends up poisoning her with an apple guy comes and kisses her away kind of thing <clears throat> which uh you know there have been adaptations of this story uh you know with Kristen stewart playing snow white in that snow white and the huntsman movie and everything which wasn't too bad but we'll just see how it all plays out i'm i'm, I'm interested to see what uh, greta gerwig does so that is my first story of the week. So for my second story of the week, it looks like there has been some more casting uh, added to the Netflix uh, last Air uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender uh, uh, show uh, for um, uh, uh, Netflix. Uh, so they've added Paul uh, Paul Sun Sun Hu Lee. I'm sorry if I messed up their names as Uncle Iroh, Liam, uh, Liam Kai Su uh, as Gyatsu, and then Ken Liu, 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 um, uh, as Commander Zhao. Um, now, uh, you may now to to real quick uh, sum up those of uh, Lee. <clears throat> who is playing, and you may know him from Kim's Convenience, then he was also in uh, uh, The Mandalorian. He played that X-Wing pilot. He will be playing one of my favorites, Uncle Iroh, and he is a retired Fire Nation general and the wise and nurturing mentor to his hot-headed nephew, Prince uh, Zuko. I like Zuko too. Lim, 
uh, will take on Gyatso, a kind and caring air nomad monk who is the guardian, father figure, and best friend to Aang. All these people, have, the main characters have been cast and everything. Uh, I didn't do a story on that. I wish I had, but at the time, I think some other stuff had dropped that I felt was more important. And then Li Yung will play Commander Zhao, a scheming and ambitious Fire Nation military officer who's eager to leverage an unexpected encounter with a desperate Prince Zoko to advance his personal goals. Now, as far as this casting goes, great casting. I don't know uh, Lim, uh, that actor. Um, I don't. I don't know him. I, if I have seen something with him in it, I don't remember him. So sorry about that. Um, as far as uh, uh, Paul C. Soon Hing, Soon Hing Lee, uh, I do think that that is good casting. Um, I'd never seen Kim's Convenience, but from his acting on uh, The Mandalorian, I thought he did a good job, even though his parts were uh, small. I thought he did a good job. And Uncle Iroh uh, is such a great character. Can't wait to see what he does there. And then as far as uh, Liung goes as playing Commander Zhao, uh, this is fantastic casting. Um, he, I find him to be a very good actor. I enjoy everything that I've seen him in. He usually plays the bad guy because he's got that, you know, that kind of nefarious scheming look. And I like it, but he's great. And I, I, I do... Uh, I can't wait to see what they do. Now, they do join the cast of Daniel Day Kim, who was recently uh, uh, hired to play uh, Fire Lord uh, Ozai. Um, and then he also uh, joins Dallas Liu as Prince Zuko, Gordon Cormier as Aang, uh, Kaiwen Tio as Katara, and Ian Osley, I think, as Soka. Or Sokka, Soka, Sokka. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that. Now, I think this is great for Asian representation. Um, if you remember, uh, uh, <clears throat> they had the live action uh, adaptation of the, of the movie that came out, uh, uh, written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and that was a big disaster, but they cast a lot of white people in that movie. And if you're like me, uh, I, I honestly felt like they should have, and this was, this is not about like, you know, being all like, like, oh, they whitewashed it. You can have white people in it, but I just felt like this is so Asian um, orientated that I think casting Asians in your, your show was not only appropriate, but it's the right thing. Like, it's like, for me personally, like it's if you make an anime, they have you have to cast Asians. You have to. That's, they're, they're drawn because they're Asian. And I honestly felt like, them casting a bunch of white people in that movie was a bad choice. And they cast a lot of unknowns and that was also a bad choice. So I think that casting Asians for this is not only good for representation, but I think it's the right move just because, as I said before, it's a lot of Asian uh, aspects in this show and infusion and stuff like that, that I think that it's, it's just the right thing to do. Now, if you remember correctly, the creators of Avatar The Last Airbender for Nickelodeon left the project. They left Netflix. They're going to do their own uh, uh, show, um, which I think is very fascinating. It makes me wonder, what did they want to do that Netflix was like, no, this is what we need you to do. Uh, and I, I think that it, it, it's, it screams a red flag as far as what is Netflix doing uh, and is this going to be bad? Um, I also think that it's probably are probably just going to tell the same story as the the animated uh, show, and I think that that's also a bad choice. Um, you know, we've already seen that with the animated show. Why would I go and watch a live action version of that? What can you possibly add to this show that the animation did that didn't do, and you think you can do better? Um, I think that when it comes to adaptations, you know, people will compare it. And I think that that's the worst idea. I think that the best thing that they should have done <clears throat> was uh, adapt uh, uh, the story from when they were kids from that first show to Korra and add, tell the story of the adults, uh, uh, adult Aang and adult Katara. And just, you know, how like, you know, their love story, how he was the avatar, how his death, you could follow it up with his death. If you really went to end the series, you can talk about, you can see the birth of their children and the, the struggle there, all that good stuff. You could see all, you could do all that stuff and they just didn't do it. Um, now I, I think, and I think that Netflix adaptation record is just really bad in my opinion. 
Now they have started filming. They recently announced that they have started filming and they are using the visual production technology from the Mandalorian. And that's where they get them in like this, like this room, this like smaller room or whatever. And then they just project a, a background on uh, the background, like a, like a kind of like a video game background and the actors act there and they don't have to build these huge humongous sets and they don't have to go and film on location. So I think that that will be, I think that's a smart move, especially for this show. Um, it does kind of suck as far as not being able to see ag- beyond actual locations, because sometimes when you get an actor in location, there's no, there's no replicating that. It's just like when they're in, you know, like, like Lord of the Rings to, to film that, uh, in that kind of technology, it just wouldn't be the same. It just wouldn't be the same. You know what I'm saying? So that is my second story of the week. Uh, So for my third and final story of the week, Sabine Wren has been cast for Ahsoka, uh, the Ahsoka series for Disney Plus. And they have uh, cast Natasha Liu uh, Bordizo. I think that's how you say her last name. Now, I personally don't know this actress, but she was in uh, The Society and uh, The Voyeurs, and then she also voiced uh, a, a character in Wish Dragon. That's the only thing that I've seen that she's in. I hear society, The Society is very good. I personally have not seen it, though, but I, I, I can't wait to see what happens, and I'm glad that they've cast Sabine Wren. Now... You may remember that Rosario Dawson is playing Ahsoka Tano uh, in the live action version of her, and she debuted on The Mandalorian, which I thought that that episode was very good. I think Rosario Dawson is a very good choice. I mean, I thought she did a good job. She looks great. I wish that her Liku were a little bit longer and that her horns were a little bit bigger, but, you know, what are you going to do? Because I just feel like her Liku is, uh, or Liku, is it Liku or like, it's Liku. Uh, I feel like those should be a little bit longer. But other than that, I thought she did a great job and she looks great and everything was great. So Sabine is a Mandalorian who was a main character in the show Star Wars Rebels, which was created by Dave Filoni. This character was created by Dave Filoni. And I think that that's... um, I think it's interesting that they're bringing these live action uh, uh, or these these animated characters to the live action uh, TV shows. And I, I, I am all for it. I love Star Wars. I love being in that universe. Um, I love, you know, the ships, the characters, the species, the creatures. It's all so great. Bounty Hunters are the best. Um, but I just love it. I just love that whole universe. So who is Sabine Wren? Well, Sabine Wren, who was voiced by uh, uh, Taya uh, Sikar, Sirkar, Sirkar, I think that's how you say her name. Um, and she is a young Mandalorian warrior, as I mentioned before, and a graffiti artist, an Imperial Academy dropout, and a former bounty hunter with expert knowledge of weapons and explosive. Now, uh, I know I think it's great. Now they're they're looking at to um, start production in March um, of of next year, and I think that this is uh, going to be great. It's it's said that uh, <clears throat> there will be appearances by Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker, and these will likely be flashbacks, um, as this this series will be set five years after Return of the Jedi. And if you remember at the end of Star Wars Rebels, if you watch that, I did a review a long time ago. You guys can check that out of the whole series. Um, but um, if you remember at the end of it, Ahsoka and uh, uh, Sabine Wren, they got on a ship together and they went looking for Ezra Bridger, if you remember that. So it'll be interesting. Also be interesting to see if Ezra Bridger, 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 Bridger makes an appearance on uh, the Ahsoka show. I, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in on Star Wars. Um, you know, d- the TV shows, I don't know about movies because there's none in the, the works just yet, but we'll see. So far, the TV shows, uh, I feel have been uh, positive in my opinion. All right, you guys. So that is all I got for you today. Tell me, what do you guys think about this? How do you feel about Greta Gerwig getting the the gig to write Snow White, the live action version of Snow White? Um, or do you like Greta Gerwig? Do you like her writing? Um, do you feel that this is a good project for her? Do you think she's going to elevate the source material and bring it, you know, kind of a newer kind of story, but also tell that classic story of Snow White? Or do you think she's going to screw it up altogether? Uh, you know, that is a possibility. You never know. I personally don't like all of the live action adaptations up to this point um i thought cruella was pretty good but i you know i didn't feel like that was real i felt like that was like a alternate universe uh kind of thing not a prequel 
to uh, the 101 Dalmatian story. So maybe she can elevate this, maybe bring it into, uh, you know, this more modern world and, and not crap all over a classic. Um, and then how do you feel about uh, Paul? <laughs> if I could say these names correctly, hold on, I'm just going to. Okay. And then how do you feel about uh, Ken Leung? Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, Paul Soon Hyung Lee and uh, Lim Kai Su. I, I don't know if I'm saying these names right. Uh, but how do you feel about those three gentlemen joining Avatar The Last Airbender for Netflix? Are you, are you cool with this? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you think they picked good actors for these characters? I think they did a fantastic job picking uh, actors for these characters. I, I think that these this casting is spot on. I think that, you know, you, I just think it's spot on and I, I can't wait to see, I hope they've got the armor, all that good stuff. I can't wait to see this show. Um, even if Netflix doesn't have a good track record, as far as adaptations go, um, I love Avatar, the last airbender, and I will watch anything that is put out there. You know what I'm saying? And then finally, how do you feel about Sabine Wren being cast in Ahsoka, uh, the TV show? And then how do you feel about Natasha Liu, uh, Bordizo being cast as, uh, uh, Sabine Wren. Do you, are you excited about this? Do you think this is great for the TV shows? Do you think this is great for Star Wars? Do you hope she makes it onto the big screen and makes it into a big, you know, live action movie with a big showdown, you know, real big throwdown kind of thing? Um, or do you think that this was a miscast? You know, I don't know Natasha Liu Bordizo, uh, so I don't know if she's a, a good actress, but um, I, I hope she is. And I hope that this turns out well, and I wish nothing but the best for people. So those are my three stories, you guys. Go ahead and tell me what you think. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you are to my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week on my Week in Review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey, nerds. If you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.